going through the home free hill obstacle. Oh man. I am out of clearance. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to a fantastic new series we're calling 4Runner to Pro Runner, where we're taking this bone stock Toyota 4Runner SR5 entry level truck and showing you what it takes to transform a vehicle like this into an off-road beast. And our official tour guide bringing us along this journey is James Buff. Hey Tommy, how you been? James, introduce yourself. James is a Toyota expert who's been all around this community and knows just about everything there is to know. Sure, um, so I moved to Colorado in 2011 for off-roading. Um, started off with an FJ Cruiser, uh, helped found the local FJ Cruiser club, uh, switched to this guy in 2018. Um, my poor truck, I, it's, it serves snow duty and off-road and that's all I, that's all I do with it. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I had the, had the built FJ and then uh, and now I have the built 4Runner. So James is an incredible knowledge base within this community and he is the one that's really driving this train to uh, this transformation series. <laughs> Um, one thing, Mr. James Buff, I'm noticing is that you are in a TRD off-road 4Runner, and this is just the lowly SR5, so how are we going to make this fair? So uh, the difference in terms of traction aids between our two vehicles, um, my vehicle has crawl control, multi-terrain select, uh, regular old A-track, and a rear locker. Uh, your truck, the SR5, uh, just has A-track, which is really good for here in Colorado, but none of the crawl control MTS uh, or uh, or the rear locker. So to make it fair today, we're both gonna be in low and uh, we're both gonna have a track on and then we'll see how far each one of us can get through the course. All right, deal, I'm just heading into low range here and then we'll go ahead and stick a track on and then we'll be good to go. All right, game on boys, heading your way. Nothing to it. Oh yeah, so we're starting out here in Dirty Deeds, which should be pretty simple. And indeed, even on the street tires, it's feeling pretty darn good. Now James, when you bought that 4Runner, was that thing as stock as can be, or did you buy it pre-modified at all? I bought it brand new. Uh, it was as stock as could be, and uh, I spent the next three days ordering all the parts uh, that you see on it now. It was about $11,000 in three days. Uh, I had it off the stock wheels and tires at 400 miles. Let's talk about some of the key areas where we can improve this stock Toyota 4Runner. Sure. Uh, so one of the biggest problems, uh, you know, uh, trucks have from stock are the tires, right? The, and and these, are, these are tires made for the road, which is where most of these vehicles live their lives. Once you start to go off-road, you just don't have the tread gaps or the tread depth um, to deal with stuff like mud and mud and rocks and things like that. Um, the next thing, uh, the biggest issue from an off-road perspective, I think that we suffer here in Colorado, as we're going up steep hills, the truck tends to become a tripod. Lifting the truck gives you extra down travel. It gives you extra ability to reach down and grab if you're really close. All right, James, so we got this little rock outcropping and I just saw you drive over it, cleared it with no difficulty. So I'm gonna attempt the same line and see if on stock ground clearance, um, I, have, uh, I have any more difficulties. Get it really slow, just in case. Let me know if I'm about to hit Grant. Wow, what a machine! Did 
Just right there, yep. About as damn close, it just felt a little tap on the underside. All right, having cleared that last obstacle now, we're gonna make the hard left down slip and slide. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and shift it all the way down into first gear for this just to control my speed. So how much of a difference did upgrading those tires make in terms of the performance of the vehicle? Was, it, was that, you think, the, the biggest change in the day-to-day the, the -day performance? Uh, the things that I slip on, it's it's night and day, especially in deep uh, in deep snow and like bad weather. Yeah, it's night and day difference. Do you find yourself more comfortable airing down as well? Because as that sidewall expands, you've got more protection too, huh? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, I, I, it's easier when you have the compressor. A lot of people, uh, they kind of wait on compressors or air and then they, they kind of don't want to air down and you know, you're only one busted tire away from being able to pay for a compressor. Okay, so he just walked right down this puppy. Oh! There's the difference, James! We found the difference! We found it! Yep. And you know, that's going down too. Going up is another story when you don't have gravity helping you. All right, well, there you go. So there is a difference that even a small lift can make. This series wouldn't be possible without the support of our friends at Rider Justice, a law firm that specializes in helping motorcycle riders across the country. They're passionate overlanders as well. And as with their motorcycle brothers and sisters, they want to make sure that overlanders out there like you protect their pricey one-of-a-kind rigs from theft and damage. Start with a simple audit of your insurance coverage. Did you know that anything attached to your overlanding vehicle is covered by your auto insurance? But anything you put in your vehicle is covered by your homeowner's insurance. Don't know which is which? That's where Rider Justice can help. Go to riderjustice.com overlanding to find more tips and smart advice on hitting the road with more peace of mind. One of the other advantages too of an aftermarket bumper um, is it, it increases the angle that you can get to the tire. So if you're on a really hard obstacle uh, and you need to hit at a little bit of an angle, and you know can get can get the rock up to about right here before you start to hit the bumper where a lot of times the stock trucks for mpg reasons they try to push the bumper down as low as they can to kind of deflect the wind around the tire and then lastly we should probably talk about like protection underneath the vehicle too right yeah uh, so i have a full set of bud built skids on my truck um, all the way to the gas tank i have a rear differential skid as well the rear diff skid not as necessary if you don't go really fast Right, now down into Nathan's Crack. Fortunately, not too muddy, but still rocky with roots and all that stuff. Right, and the challenge here is it's basically this big V notch. I'm kind of worried I'm gonna run out of um, approach angle, which is something that you should have an advantage uh, with with that, that high clearance bumper, right? Yeah, and I'll bury it kind of here in the, in the V and we'll see how much of a difference. Scraping in the back. It's still scraped in the back. <laughs> oh yeah. That's gonna be a pretty good demonstration, I think, of the challenges. Well, you can see any further, and it would not only take out the fog light, but all of this expensive plastic, um, beautiful bodywork. Um, on this route and then on this pretty big rock. So that is not only the advantage of the lift, but also the high clearance front bumper on James's forerunner. Now I gotta back up. All right, do we have the traction to back on out of this predicament? Oh yes. Woo! That's not bad on the stock, more or less all season-y tires. Pretty impressive out of the stock 4Runner. Not impressive enough to get through the obstacle, but still, we were able to guide it out. And last 
last up, the big mud pit on Home Free Hill. Woo! A-track, A-track, and out. There we go. Going through the home, home free hill obstacle. Approach it nice and gently. Can't fly into it because of this big steep drop off here. And then we're just going to be plowing mud. Once I get that departure off, then I can work my way onto the accelerator. Ooh. So with that knowledge, my bumper is burying pretty good there just trying to get into this thing. I'm gonna roll up the window here onto the accelerator. I'm trying to stay on it. Oh man. I am out of clearance. <laughs> At this point, I think I'm pretty high centered. A track is doing its thing. Oh yeah, that is uh, that's about as stuck as stuck can be. The issue is you've got such an aggressive approach, you can't take the approach very quick. Right. And then once you're in it, once you have the chance to apply some accelerator, you end up here. Yep. You, you, you mind? Pulling cable? Not at all. Okay, thank you, sir. <laughs> now, um, one question I have for you, um, James, is the old style winches have the hook. Yours, I notice, is a loop. It's like a closed style Correct. system. What's the advantage of that? This is a little larger than a standard D ring, but the nice thing about this is it's flexible. You can put anything through here. You can do that with a hook as well, but if you notice with a lot of the hooks, they have a little flap that comes back and keeps it closed. This is closed. So there's no chance, anything that happens while we're doing this, there's no chance that the little flap will go or that the hook will bind up or anything like that. Okay, so what we're gonna do is my back end here is pretty pretty far to the left. So what we're gonna do is try to get the forerunner into, an, forerunner into a straight position where it's getting pulled back up to the other truck. James, sometimes big stuck requires big toys. It, it does. Tommy, you copy? I copy, how you feeling? <laughs> uh, not as easy of a day as I was expecting to begin with. Are you ready to be winched up? Yeah, ready. So here's what I'm going to do down here. Uh, as I start to roll from you, uh, make sure you keep the tension on. As I start to roll, I'm going to back up and cut it hard passenger. I'm going to try to put my front end straight in line with the back end and then up to you. All right, ready to go. All right, I've got my foot hard on the brake. I'm winching in. to it just got to bring the right ram <laughs> all 
right, James, I'm in drive. I'm ready to be winched. I'll be pulling. Yes, we're moving. Come on, Toyota. Still not out of it. Still digging. Wow, this thing was stuck. I can't believe James made this, made it through this at all without being winched. Wow, these tires when they get muddy. Not much that they want to do. A little more. Alright, I think I'm out right about now. Yay! I'm gonna run the winch line back out and uh, line it back up. Fantastic. All right, James, well, that turned out to be a little bit more of an uh, adventure than we had anticipated. <laughs> But I hope you guys can see the sheer difference between stock versus modified because you made it through that last event and this thing was hopelessly stuck. Yeah, uh, I've I still got, I have a lot more mud uh, there in my skid plates that I'm gonna have to clean out. But yeah, that, that approach is being so steep, it makes it hard to get any kind of speed to get through the mud. So yeah, not having the clearance and not having the traction seem to make all the difference. And you can see, you got mud down on your skid. We got the mud all the way up clear here in the license plate. So that's the difference between the front bumpers. But guys, a huge thank you to James. He's gonna be taking over this series and really uh, really doing some cool stuff with his foreigner. So you wanna stay tuned. And uh, James, thanks for doing this, buddy. Yeah, no problem. It was a great time. I enjoyed it. <laughs>